I'm Rob from Smartboat Innovations. In this video, we'll explore and install additional add-ons for Home Assistant. These add-ons enhance the capabilities of our Smartboat. One of the main reasons I chose Home Assistant as the framework for Smartboating is its vast community support. Add-ons and integrations can be created by anyone and integrated seamlessly into Home Assistant. I'm also in the process of developing a Smartboat integration specifically for Home Assistant. While our initial tutorials didn't need any supplementary installation, the forthcoming videos will introduce and harness enhanced Home Assistant capabilities. We will cover the following add-ons. First, the Terminal SSH Secure Shell enables us to access the Linux operating system on the Raspberry Pi. Normally, we don't need to do this, but there are a few occasions when it's helpful, for example, to see raw data coming from our boat instrumentation. Also, if something goes wrong, it's useful to have an alternative access method to the Raspberry Pi. We'll also install the PuTTY SSH app so we can access the Raspberry Pi from a remote device like a Windows laptop. We'll install ESP Home. ESP Home allows us to integrate microprocessors like this ESP32 without having to write computer programs. In the past, it was quite complicated to use these devices. One had to learn a programming language and be quite tech savvy. ESP Home simplifies this for us, and at most we only need to update some configuration files. When this is the case, I will provide these files so you can simply copy and paste them into ESP Home. Devices like the ESP32 open up a vast world of Internet of Things, and we can use them for tasks like engine temperature and oil pressure sensors, battery monitoring, and wireless in instrumentation interfaces, just to name a few. We'll also install Studio Code Server to allow us to edit Home Assistant configuration files. Again, this will be quite rare, but there will be times we need to make some minor changes. Lastly, we'll add the Google Drive Backup add-on. It is vital to routinely backup our system. And with this add-on, we simply configure it once and leave it. It takes all the complications out of backups. We will use Home Assistant to add and configure these add-ons. So let's get started. Here we are in Home Assistant. First thing we need to do is go to our user profile and scroll down and select advanced mode. This just unlocks some of the advanced features of Home Assistant. Let me go to settings and under settings, we'll find add-ons. This is where we add all the add-ons. As you see, we don't have any added. So the bottom right is the add-on store. Now this is organized into three different parts. You have the official add-ons, the ESP home add-ons, the community add-ons, and private add-ons further down, but we don't have any. And if you wanted to add some the three dots, you can add repositories here and you can add the, the URL address of the external add-on. So the first add-on we're going to add is the uh, terminal and SSH server. So we click on that. Now all these add-on screens, they have the same look and feel. At the top they have an info and documentation tabs. So we can have a look at those and then they have an install button. So let's click install. And this might take a while depending on the speed of your Raspberry and your internet connection. Okay, then it comes up with some extra tabs. Configuration, here we're going to add a password. It's more secure to add uh, public key, private keys, authorization keys, but I find the password is fine for the time being. So we save that part and then we go to network, show the disabled ports and we add port 22 in here, which is the standard SSH port and save that as well. Okay, so we want to uh, select the watchdog. So if the SSH server ever stops, the system will restart it and we'll show the icon, the terminal icon in the sidebar. So let's start it. Let's start it up. So once these add-ons have started up, it's usually a good idea to see that they started okay. Um, so here we go with the log. Now, a lot of this might, might make sense to you, but if it doesn't have any fonts in red with words of error, 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 it's usually okay. So we go back, we can actually have a look from here what the, the UI looks like. So it takes you to a command line mode of the, the Linux operating system on the Raspberry Pi. Logs you know as root, the user, which is a super user. So if you don't know what you're doing, don't do anything in here, please. Because you can actually destroy Home Assistant. Okay, now we're going to go 
into the internet and find a product called Putty. Uh, it has a putty.org, the, the URL web page. So we download Putty. Uh, it only has, has it for Windows, but Mac has its own version of SSH uh, apps as well you can use. So here I select the one for mine and then I click to execute the download file and it's a quite a short installation. I had the shortcut to the desktop because I like them there. And we do the install. Click finish and on the desktop we have a, the putty icon. Now we have to put the IP address of our Raspberry Pi and here it's a .120. 422 is what we configured in Home Assistant. Here I'm going to actually save a session so the next time we can just click load and open. So we save it to the smart boat, click on open and here we are in the same the same command line interface on Linux and it logs, logs you on again as the super user root. Also on the left hand side on the sidebar it's put a icon for terminal which is probably the main way you're going to be accessing uh, the Raspberry Pi, the Linux. So again it logs you on as root and type in exit to, to leave. So we have the next add-on we're going to add. Add-on store. If we scroll down, scroll down, it's actually a, going to be a community add-on, the, the Studio Code Server. Again, it's got the info and documentation tabs at the top. And then we click the install button. In this case, we don't have to select the watchdog because it's just an editor. It's not a critical process. So if it crashes, we don't have to have it restarted. But we'll show it in the sidebar, the icon. So we can just click on start. So it's started up. On the left hand side on the sidebar, it's created an icon, Studio Code Server. So we can go have a look. It always asks you these trust questions. So just click yes, OK all the time. It's basically an editor for, for configuration files. The main file we ever want to edit is configuration.yaml. Um, and that's about it. Again, don't go in there if you don't know what you're going to do because you could sort of mark up Home Assistant. So we go back to the add-ons. The next one is the ESP Home we're going to install. Again, at the top we have the info and the documentation tabs. So we click install. Um, in this case, we're going to actually select the watchdog because ESP Home will will control some microprocessors which might do important things for us. So if they crash, it's good that this system restarts it. And again, we'll show the icon in the sidebar. Uh, there's no configuration, extra configuration we need to set, and the logs are empty. So we can just click start. And it started. Just check the logs. Again, it might not mean much, but as long as they're writing in red with the words error, it should be fine. So we can have a look what the add-on looks like, look at the web, the UI, and here it's, this is where we'd be adding new ESP Home devices. So the last add-on is actually not found in uh, Home Assistant, but it's in the outside repository. It's the Google Drive backup add-on. So we have to find it. It's under the GitHub, this, this address that you can see there. It's a well-known add-on, so it's quite safe and secure. So we just need to scroll down to find the instructions. And here in the instructions, usually it has an address of the repository. So we need to click this and copy it. Right-click, copy. And then we go back to add-ons. Go to the add-on store and on the top right in the three dots we go to repositories and then here we paste that URL we just copied and we add the repository to Home Assistant. Once it's added you need to refresh this page on Home Assistant for it to appear in the add-on store. So I've refreshed it and now we'll scroll down and down 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 and to the very bottom you'll see the next group repositories and we have the Google Drive backup. So again it has the info and doco. Again it's pretty much a one-click install. So we'll click the install button 
Um, he will select the watchdog because it's quite important what the backups run. So if it crash, crashes, it's good that Home Assistant restarts it. And we'll, again, we'll show the icon in the sidebar. And we'll just start the, the backup. Some of the, the Docker is the same. The configuration, you can leave it as it is, but you can just set how many how often the backups done, how many backups are kept on the Google Drive and how many backups are kept in uh, on the Raspberry Pi. So if you go on to the left of the icon, now I'm not gonna do this part, but you've got to go to your Google Drive and get a authentication code and you then have to copy it from there and paste it into here and that will link the two together. But once it's linked, you don't have to do it anything. So let's just summarize the add-ons we've added. We added the, the terminal SSH server, which logs you onto Linux. The Studio Code Server, which allows you to edit configuration files in Home Assistant. It always asks you for these trust questions, just confirm them. Um, then ESP Home, so we can add a whole lot of microprocessors without writing code. And last of all is our Google Drive backup, which you, which you need to configure. So now we have Home Assistant configured with these extra add-ons, and we're ready for our forthcoming videos. Thank you for joining me today and exploring the incredible world of smart boating. If you found this video helpful and informative, I would appreciate if you hit the like button below. And if you'd like to stay updated with more exciting content on boating and technology, consider subscribing to my channel by clicking the subscribe button. Your support means a lot and helps me create more valuable videos like this. Until next time, hasta luego.